Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and this video all about the stringers and the side plating. At various stages of the build we added and removed the stringers for a few different reasons. They're really quite useful for like, securing other pieces in place like the frames um, and also we had to remove a few because of putting the transom in that kind of stuff and it's one of those things that you know just a few tacks here and there it's quite easy to cut out so it's quite flexible but at this stage needing to put the side plating on next we had to install all of the stringers because otherwise we wouldn't be able to have access to them. It was a fairly easy process because all the parts were numbered and uh, they also had markings for where each frame should correspond. So uh, it was quite easy to kind of find the right piece and put it in the right place. At this stage we decided to leave out some of the stringers that go in where the radius plates go in. And that was to give us a bit easier access into and out of the boat so we could climb in and out more easily. We also decided to cut out the holes in the bulkheads that would eventually be the companion ways because that meant that we could move about inside the boat much more easily. We actually did that with a, an angle grinder because we hadn't by then bought the plasma cutter. I'm only cutting it to here. So I reckon that's all the space we need to get through for the moment. Mm -hmm. Do much easier than a plasma cutter. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Before we could start fitting the side plates we actually had to have a bit of a shuffle around because they weren't in an order that kind of made sense in terms of how we were going to build. So we thought we would move them all about, get them in two piles for each side and then we could start adding them in. Got the time lapse As you can imagine, these plates are quite big, quite wide, uh, and fairly thick, so it's, uh, it's quite heavy work. And we're really glad to have a gantry for this, because positioning the plates was, was quite an intricate process, you had to be quite precise. And uh, we'd also bought, for the transom build, uh, we'd bought some screw clamps, which made it a lot easier for sort of finding the centre of gravity of the whole thing and, and balancing out the plates, but also manipulating the plates later. We started on the port side at the back of the boat and on the back plates we just fixed it to the transom and then also to the bulkhead that kind of meets up near the front of that plate. With the first plate tacked in those two places we noticed that the frames in between the transom and that bulkhead uh, looked like a little higher than the, the kind of drawn on deck line and this is where you know the sort of problem solving comes in. This plate, this frame here, is in the right place, but the stringers aren't on the plate, despite the fact that the top and the bottom of the front and the back are both in the right place. So, yeah, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Like I said before, that problem solving makes up a, a large deal of the time, but we don't tend to film a lot of that, uh, just because it's quite frustrating and you're kind of uh, trying to work things out. Firstly with that we made as many observations as possible so with the frames looking like they were higher we decided to measure those frames and uh, so we went back to the drawings and, and checked all the dimensions and measured as many as we could and they all seemed to be exactly right. So the next stage was thinking that maybe the uh, transom and that bulkhead weren't square, weren't parallel to each other or maybe weren't square to the center line and uh, again we took some measurements kind of figured out how we could take measurements where we could take measurements and 
Again, everything seemed to line up. With those measurements not quite adding up and it not really making a lot of sense, we decided to add the plate on the starboard side as well and uh, actually ended up adding all the other plates at the same time. Where we attach the plates we would end up with different problems and uh, so one of the observations was that like with the middle plate it seemed to be just a little bit higher than the other two if it was parallel where the butt weld would be if we added it differently the other problem was that where the two plates came together for a butt weld and were level they would be touching at the bottom and then there would be a sort of 12 mil gap at the top Eventually, we figured out that that was down to a, a bit of sag in the hole. Just both ends had kind of drooped a little bit. It wasn't very much at all. We used the gantry, some bottle jacks and some acro props to kind of lift both ends, and uh, that made everything fit nicely. So we found when putting um, the side plating on that we just need to lift the back up a little bit. So we're using a couple of bottle jacks just to lift both sides and then acro props just to sort of keep things stable so that it stays in the middle, stays centered on the jig. It was really surprising to us how much flexibility there was still in the hull at this stage. We decided before committing and welding everything in to that that we ought to check our work so we got the deck plates and uh, just checked that they kind of fit where they should and that the kind of drawn deck line was right and we also used a cardboard template towards the back of the boat and everything lined up perfectly. To make the joins at the seams we did a few tack welds on the inside uh, but we wanted to keep those plates as flexible as possible to get a fair join, a nice even line across that butt weld is, is quite difficult and so what we did is on the outside of the hull to make the joins a bit more secure is took some small tabs of 3mm steel and just kind of welded them either side of the joint and that will allow us quite a lot of flexibility so that we can move the joint around a bit in order to get that fair join between them. Definitely this is one of the more satisfying parts of the boat build because a lot of steel is going on all at once. We'd kind of gone from having the majority of the steel still on the floor to most of it on the boat by now and uh, obviously it goes from looking like a sort of bare skeleton to something that with a bit of imagination might float. <laughs> it also goes relatively quickly and at this stage you know like a lot of the the parts were in place and actually none of the problems that we had with this stage really took that much time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video which will be all about the deck plating, coach roof and pilot house. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. At the end of the video, you'll see links to some of our older videos as well as the playlist of the build so far.